Okay, so this time I'm going to carry on with some string diagrams. So first, a little bit more about the generalities, and I think I've said too much possibly already about the generalities, and I should just get stuck into some, some examples, but just a little bit more before I do. So we've got the notion of the interchange uh, rule for composition of natural transformations. So if we have four natural transformations, uh, and hopefully I've drawn these sensibly here, so we're going from category C to D and then to E, and we've got functors F, F prime, and F prime prime from C to D, and we've got natural transformations from F to F prime, F prime to F prime prime, and similarly uh, on this side here. Then there's a couple of ways we can we can compose these. So for instance, we could stick those two together and stick those two together, and to get two natural transformations, which we can then glue together horizontally. Or we could have done it the other way. We could compose those two together first and compose those two together and then glue them vertically. And the interchange rule for natural transformations, which is a calculation, uh, shows that those two things are the same. So if you just glue, if I just stuck those together, I, I guess I could just do something clever, like remove those lines and those lines. So doing that, the interchange law says that's well defined. You don't have to specify which way I glue them together. So over in the world of string diagrams, remember, we're taking jewels here. So what, what we do is we have a little dot, little dot here, little dot here, well, which we make a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and then we take the jewel of that line becomes this line here, and the jewel of this arrow here becomes this line here. And so this bit here becomes the bit over here. Uh, so I've just translated this picture into string diagrams. The interchange law says that this is well defined, so I don't have to specify if I'm doing horizontal or vertical gluings uh, first. Okay, so that's the interchange law in string diagrams. Uh, one other thing I should mention is sort of the identity natural transformation, just how we notate that, which is just sort of like whiskering in, in some sense, whatever um, whiskering really sort of means. So whiskering, I guess, in this globular language means we have some, try and draw my diagrams very crisply. Oh, I'm not succeeding. Okay, so we just have D and C, and we have theta, say going from F to F primed. And the idea is we can stick on, if we have a functor G from D to E, then I can do this horizontal composition. What this G really means here, so this really means uh, the identity natural transformation from G to itself. So that's what that G really means. But it's not really doing anything interesting, so we just, we just write it like that. Okay, so how do we represent this over in the world of string diagrams? Well, it, we just do kind of the obvious thing. We're supposed to be taking the jewel, so we just represent it by a straight line like that. So over here we have G, over here we have theta, and we have F primed and F. And you can either fill in what's supposed to go uh, in the regions. You see, I'm not doing this very well at all. Let's put it up here so we don't confuse it with this G and this E. But the diagram can get a bit cluttered, so I'll often just remove these things. That looks a bit less cluttered, and hopefully it's still unambiguous. 